get to spend the next 10 minutes finding out just how upset I get to be. This is the Find X5 Pro from Oppo, which they actually sponsored this unboxing of, except, fun fact, even if I wanted to buy one, I wouldn't be allowed to because it's not available in North America. So I sincerely hope, in spite of the sponsorship deal, that it's just not that great. Frankly, the specs aren't looking good for me though. It's got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is the latest flagship that we're seeing in Android phones. It's got 12 freaking gigs of RAM because why wouldn't it? 256 gigs of storage, a 6.7 inch display. It is IP68 water resistant and it feels really nice. Boy, is that ever a cool backing. Over the years, Oppo has done some really striking designs both with their material choice and with their, their curves and contours. So it's still got a thick camera bump, but it's got a very different look to it. This is another one of their Hasselblad collaborations. So you've got two 50 megapixel rear shooters back here, along with a 12 megapixel telephoto. You've got your flash and all that good stuff. And then you'll find a 32 megapixel front shooter with a hole punch. That is an extremely smooth backing material. That has got to be some kind of corning glass. It's not corning glass? Oh, is it like a ceramic thing? Okay, that explains it. So, you're probably going, oh wow, the molding for this must have been a nightmare. To get it just right for that contour? Oh yeah, it fits fine though. Okay, that's pretty cool. You're almost definitely going to want to use a case and you're almost definitely going to want to hate everything about that experience because this really does look and feel really, really good. It's, it's just definitely got that slip, you know what I'm saying? And you know what's really funny is it's a whole thing, right? Like it's a whole meme, resale white for car colors. Why don't we see more white phones? Look at this. I've been handling this thing this whole time. You can't see a bloody fingerprint on it. That doesn't mean they're not there, they're there. You just can't see them because it's white. As slippery as the ceramic might be though, Oppo is claiming 1200 to 1300 on the Vickers hardness scale for this thing, meaning it should be extremely scratch resistant. Of course, I will let Jerry rig everything be the one to test that. I'm sure, you, I'm sure Zach's gonna have a video about that at some point in the future. What kind of Gorilla Glass is it on the front? It's gotta be Victus. This is like very flagship feeling. It's Victus? Yeah. I don't know, man. I've been kind of considering going back to a candy bar and maybe I'll try this for a little bit. It depends on band support though. And if they're not shipping it in North America, there's a chance that the band support here might not be that great. But the thing is it's running a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. My understanding is the 5G modem is built into that. So it supports 5G, I guess I didn't mention that yet. It does have dual SIM support, no micro SD expansion. Come on, let's bring back micro SD expansion. It's not that big, I mean, let me know guys, would you rather have micro SD or second SIM? I mean, over here, yeah, but my understanding is dual SIM is a lot more common overseas. All right, let's see what, let's see if we get anything here. Am I gonna get a, am I gonna get a connection? Okay, I got 4G plus, whatever the heck 4G plus is. Oh, I haven't even really done like a, a tour of the phone yet. So you've got your lock button over on the right. Okay, really nice feeling metal accent ring around the outside. I mean, metal backed phones are just a thing of the past at this point now because of wireless charging. And this supports Oppo's Super VOOC wireless charging. So up to, I believe it's 50 watts wirelessly, which is ludicrous. And then it'll do 10 watts of reverse charging up to 80 watts using the USB-C port. Let's see if they actually include a wall wart that'll handle that though. Oh, this thing looks chunky enough that it's probably gonna do it. Yep. That's an, that's an 80 watt wall wart. You can see it's not exactly a North American standard one, so I would need an adapter for it, but hey yo, there you go. Uh, type A to type C charging cable. <laughs> a thick boy, obviously. Okay, here we go, ready? Fingerprint unlock, boom. Not bad. Not the fastest I've ever seen, not the slowest either. When it's already powered on, it's actually a touch snap here. Uh, I, it looks like I have to actually check my voicemail to well, I guess we'll find out how good the speakerphone is. Uh, you have one new voice message. Volume's over on the side here. Press one. To record a message, press two. Nothing on the top. To your greetings, press three. Did I just say USB-C on the bottom? Okay. Four, two, Hopefully this three. isn't anything incriminating. This message is for Linus. I'm just following up with regards to your telephone account. Uh, at the time, I'm unable to reach you. I will try to contact you later in the week. 
Message deleted. You have no more messages. Oh, okay. I guess I better figure that out. Oh, this is cool. So not only is it an OLED display, I mean, pretty much any high-end phone has an OLED display these days, but there's some pretty cool tech in here. So they're claiming a peak brightness of 1300 nits, a resolution of 3216 by 1440. So that's like a 1440p class display, a dynamic refresh rate of one to 120 Hertz. And as we found out recently with one of their competitors, I'm not gonna name them. This is like a sponsored video. That would be super weird. Uh, but one of their competitors, uh, Oppo is actually using an LTPO plus technology OLED so it is actually possible for them to have a one to 120 Hertz uh, variable refresh rate. Whereas uh, a particular competitor was caught advertising that when that wasn't actually the case, which I thought was pretty interesting. Like some of their competitors, Oppo is shipping the screen at a full HD plus screen resolution setting and you can sharpen it if you really want to, but as they say, it could lead to higher power consumption and device temperature. Personally, I never turn it on anymore. I just don't find it makes a difference at this kind of screen size. I do not like 30 second timeouts. And I'm not a huge fan of motion controls either. I'm actually gonna change that right away. They leave video color enhancer off by default. Thank you. Oh, you can hide the front camera. Oh, by app. App by app, you can decide to hide the front camera. Well, that's cool. I haven't actually daily driven Color OS in quite some time, so I'm sure some of this stuff is not that new, but thank you for letting me decide how I want my buttons configured. That's something Sony just can't wrap their brains around, and I don't get it. I will decide how I want the buttons configured, not you. All right, it's got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and what else do we want to talk about? Oh, definitely camera. Do they have a double double click power for camera gesture yet? No, come on, Oppo. Come on, soon, right? Ah, yes, this. Oppo actually developed their own six nanometer NPU for image processing. And the idea here is that they're using it particularly in low light to generate cleaner images than were otherwise possible. So I guess other than just like taking a couple of pictures, I mean, we obviously have to fire up video recording in order to check out that five axis stabilization. Hold on, let me just give the lens a quick. There we go. Oh, is that the chip? Would you look at that? It's a little boy. All right. Now I have seen some really good stabilization recently and this is definitely some of it. That's cool. So Hoffman, you can see me shaking this, right? I don't even understand what I'm doing right now. Keep your device steady. What even the crap is going on here? Huh. How the crap many exposures is it doing to do that? Like I can almost read the display on that thing. Okay, let's switch back to our uh, 32 megapixel selfie camera. Ooh, I'm doing a portrait. Uh... A little bit of haze around me, but that is a very challenging situation. And I did manage to capture some of these little, little flyaways here. And that is a surprisingly natural looking bokeh. There may actually be something to this. Again, sponsored video guys, not a review, but the results really speak for themselves here. I mean, these are not even, I'd say the skin tone is a little off. Am I that pale? No. Okay. <laughs> But I also haven't checked if there's any kind of like beauty nonsense enabled on it or anything like that. Yes, yes, there is. Skin texture, okay, N natural. We're going back to natural. Okay, let's try again natural instead of uh, retouched. I'm still probably a touch pale. Definitely wrinklier. No, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Now, obviously, we're gonna wanna try night video here, right? So I guess this is a good opportunity for us to use the, um, the microphone on this thing. And I busted my knee at badminton, so I'm kind of limping around. So I guess we'll get to experience the smoothness of the stabilization. Okay, so we're heading into a room with no lights on whatsoever, which is gonna be pretty challenging. This doesn't seem very fair. There's no light in here. There's a little bit of light coming in from outside. 
Oh, wow, that's cool. So it kind of sharpens over time. You guys can see that, right? Obviously the video has a fair bit of grain in it, but it's usable. Like if that was your security camera or whatever, and you were trying to get a shot of the guy that broke into your stuff, then that's, I mean, the results speak for themselves. So take everything I'm saying for what it is, a sponsored video, but that's it. We recorded that. So photos, other media creation, just daily driver use, or even gaming. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention, it's got a thousand hertz polling rate for the touch inputs. Find X5 Pro got a lot going on. So you can follow Oppo on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and check them out at the link down below if you wanna learn more, particularly about this Mary Silicon. Very, very interesting, that one.